What's going on everyone? It's also Kenny here today and this is going to be a, a fully original video. So I've been getting some comments lately about, you know, conservatives don't help out people. All they do is talk about politics. Kenny, you're just political. This is why I don't want to get into politics because all you know how to do is disparage the other side. So I'm going to give some personal opinion, not personal opinion, but some things that I believe in. So today's book recommendation for me is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. So I read Think and Grow Rich a long time ago in high school. That shout out to my teacher. He recommended the book and he was like, yo, I bet you only 1% of you guys will actually go and take the time and read the book. Me, I was one of that 1%. And I think that book changed my whole perspective of how I look at life, how I stop looking for um, let me say the ghost of racism, right? Like trying to say, oh, uh, I can't do anything because I'm black. Oh, these people don't like me because I'm black. And I started looking more about how my actions and decision makings are help creating the negative outcomes that I was getting in life. And I made a bet with myself where I said, hey, I'm going to stop looking at outside factors and look more on what I can control and what I can do. That's when I started getting into stoicism. You have power over your own mind, not outside events. Know this and you have strength from Marcus Aurelius. And those words stick with me, right? In the Bible, because I went to a Christian private school. If God is with you, who could be against you? So I was like, okay, let me let me let me embody those things, right? Prayer without works is dead. Okay. You have an idea, but if you don't work for that idea, you ain't gonna have the outcome. And I'm gonna break down like three things from the book, Thinking Grow Rich, which is the three causes of failure in life. And in my view, this applies a lot to the black community in black America, because at the end of the day, if we look at stats, we're the, people will make the argument that black people are the poorest in America. And I want to kind of give um, my two cents of how I avoided that, because the income I make is well over the average income of, a, of the average black man, which I'll probably put up here on the screen. So here's my first uh, bulletin point. And this is from Think and Grow Rich. Lack of ambition to aim above mediocrity, right? And this is the bigotry of low expectations. The Democrats, and this has been a big talking point of mine, is that liberals put this idea like, oh, they need to save black people. Black people can't save themselves. We need to lower the standards. Black people need affirmative action to be successful in life. And that's not true. Look at Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was a third generation college graduate. Black people were graduating from college before the liberals came in and pretend to be the black people's savior. And I think this idea of lowering expectations, not expecting black people to show up on time, not expecting black people to be able to compete uh, in math, in math test, right? In academics is the same way if I tell you, oh, black people can't compete in basketball. A lot, of, a lot of people will look at me sideways. So why we don't take that same mentality that we approach sports and athletic into academics? And some of the reasons I point out is the behavior and habits that we pass on to our kids. My kids are learning how to, like my son anyway, my three-year-old son, he's learning how to write. We're already practicing vocabulary with him, phonics with him. We're already doing like some curriculum with my son right now at three years old. What what most black people are doing with their sons at three years old? Getting them to a, into a sport, having the football in his hand, right? You see it. Like if you've seen videos of these child prodigies, you'll see the dad is very active in training them in a sport. And my argument has always been, the same way you want your son to be uh, to be exceptional in sports, if you bring that same mentality into the academic sphere, yo, I don't see no reason why black people can't compete at the same level as Asians are in this country. Because Asians, they're at the top of the heap. If you look at the average income, Asians have the highest average income in America. So this narrative that America is this country of white supremacy and the system is holding minorities down, you have to explain to me about the Asians. Because they're a minority group and they're overrepresented in some of the highest uh, from the, some of the best Ivy League schools in America. But I, I digress. That's my, my that's the point about lack of um, lack of ambition to aim above lack of self-discipline is the big. Oh, my God. I think this is the biggest problem in black America today. Lack of self-discipline. What do you mean? Sexual discipline. Right. We like, no. there's a narrative. There's an image of black men. I can't really dispute it. That they have kids all over the place. We got Nick Cannon out here uh, exemplifying that, right? Because in a day, if you lack discipline, you you ch like discipline is you're chasing different rabbits, and you realize that you only have you can only chase one effectively. If you have kids by ten different women, how you can be a good father to these ten kids? 
unless they all live under the same roof as you. If you want to take the, the, the Islam route or the Muslim route, they all live in the same house with you under one roof. That's the only way they have equal access to you. And it's quantity versus quality. And people and people don't want to put put expectations on their kids anymore. Right? We put more expectations on our kids to be superstar athletes than to be superstar academics. And I think that's a cultural issue, right? Because we act out a lot of these uh, negative tropes in the black community, right? And here's a quote from the book. Discipline comes through self-control. This is, goes back to my sexual point, smoking. Like, if you get distracted by a pleasure, then you won't do what's necessary to get the outcomes that you want. Because success is about sacrifice. If you ain't willing to sacrifice for something, then don't expect to get the same results as someone else. And this is a big point because a lot of black people like to blame the their negative outcomes in life is from the fact that, oh, he's white. That's probably why he got into these Ivy League schools. No, nah, do you have the grades he got? No. Then, so why you have this false expectation or this entitlement that you should be somewhere because, oh, something happened to your ancestors years ago, but you're not your ancestor. You didn't go through that. You started off as, as best as a, a hand as you can get as a black person. And it's up to you to make the most of it. At least that's how I thought. And I got pretty successful in life, right? I'm a homeowner at 27 years old, no student loan debt. And it's because I don't, I, I stop looking at other people and I say, hey, let me be disciplined in my life. Let me learn a, a, a high paid skill, right? And some of you may know, I'll give you a hint. I work in tech. Learn a high value skill. Get me high income where my wife can be a stay at home mom and I can take care of two kids comfortably. Bro, I didn't make any excuses. I didn't try to defeat myself. I didn't I didn't I didn't talk myself out of, oh, I can't be successful because I'm a black man. I never told myself that. And at the end of the day, my parents wouldn't even tolerate that from me anyway. Because my mom and my dad, they put in my head, hey, we came in this country to find a better opportunity. You born in this country, we expect you to be you we expect you to do better than us. That was the expectation that was placed on me. My parents wouldn't come, wouldn't tolerate me coming back from school with a D in math and ex expect me, oh, mom, you know, it, it was because of races. The, the, the teacher was racist. That's why I got the D. Nah, I saw you yesterday, last night, watching TV till 11 p.m. at night, and you weren't, and you should have used that time to study. You're going to be studying. We don't have parents like that anymore. In 2023, if a black kid said he failed math tests and it's because of his, his racist math teacher, the parents is more likely to believe them in 2023 than they did in uh, 2003 when I was going to school in elementary school. My mom put a lot of advantages, but I took discipline to do that. To every day from the age of five till I turned six years old to sit there and teach me how to read, which was a struggle. She got frustrated. I got frustrated too. But my mom had the discipline because she knew, hey, my son's going to have a good outcome if I can give him this skill. And I think if a lot of black people start looking at how they can personally solve their own issues, their own problems. No, no political power. They wouldn't even need political power that much. Look at Asians. Asians are so important, but they I think they have less of a population than black people. But why they command so much respect? Because they, they're like, yo, we're going to do for ourselves. We're going to protect ourselves. Most kids are born in the Asian community. Most kids are born to two parent households. Right. There's stats out there that show that if you're a married couple, you are less prone to poverty than single parents. There's articles out there that saying being living on your own is not a luxury, right? But that comes from a lack of discipline in my view, right? Not properly uh, planning out your life because if, if you don't plan to succeed, you you plan to fail, right? So here's the last point, I'll, and I think this is a big issue in the in the black community: uncontrollable desire for something for nothing, right? Equivalent exchange, right? You don't want to you want everything, but you don't want to give nothing, right? The gambling instinct drives millions of people to failure. If you look at the evidence, a lot of black people like to what? Spend their money on the lottery because they believe that's the only way they can get ahead. There's the only way they can have a, a large fortune in life. Instead of having the discipline, and it goes back to my point earlier, to channel that money they're using for the gambling for a low probability odd, because if you know how to do math, you will know that the odds of you winning the lottery lottery is, bro, the odds are not in your favor. So instead of focusing your energy on something that could be in your favor, you're here squandering your way on a hope, for, like a get rich quick scheme type of thing. And that's how a lot of black people get caught up in these LMMs. This is why a lot of black people get caught up in scams is because they expect something for nothing without actually understanding the reality that success comes with sacrifices. You got to put in the grind for years on years without expecting anything back. The most the most uh, successful basketball player has been playing basketball for 15, 
like almost all their life just to get to the point where they can be in the conversation to be drafted by the NBA. And you think in other endeavors in life that you're just going to show up and be good. If I remember, I could use Future as an example. Future didn't become successful until he was 35 years old. Imagine that. You've been rapping, I don't know how long, since maybe 16 years old. Who knows? Who knows how long he, Future, had this dream of being becoming a famous rapper. Look how many years he spent trying to be a rapper. That's the kind of commitment that success demands. But a lot of people want, want success quick. Right? And I think it's this um, impatient culture that the black community has been given by, in my view, the previous generation that we we got to get money fast and all this stuff and they've passed that negative culture and value to the next generation my generation and gen x that we have this expectation that we got to get successful quick right oh we, we expect to get reparations but you never personally suffered slavery and the people who are going to pay your reparations never were slave owners only five percent of america has has any dissension white america anyway has any dissension from slave owners, but you want everyone to pay for you. That's something for nothing. Regardless how you feel, oh, I feel uh, I was traumatized by the imagery. No, but you didn't personally go through it. If they didn't do the time, if they didn't do the crime, they don't do the time. This is why reparations is such an unpopular opinion amongst everyone else but black people. Because what? It benefits them. Something for nothing. Right. If you if you don't have anything to offer, then don't don't expect anyone to give you anything in return because you don't give nothing in return. And I think this is the kind of mindset that slows black America down. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know your uh, your thoughts in the comment section. Maybe some some uh, quotes or some good books that you read about success and uh, doing well in life. I don't know. I just wanted to give my thoughts because I wanted to talk from the heart and appreciate all the thoughts of everyone uh, about Hurricane I. Idla, I forget the name already for the hurricane, but I doing, I was doing fine. I'm, I'm safe. My family's safe. We're, we're doing okay. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Appreciate you guys for watching to end the video. Peace.